Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about hepatitis D virus. So what is hepatitis D virus? Hepatitis D virus is a negative sense single-stranded spherical RNA virus. As you can see here in the picture, it has the spherical structure and this RNA is a negative sense strand. So it's a single-stranded RNA virus. Okay, so this is the point number one. So point number two is that this virus is uh, the smallest virus, known to infect human. So this virus is the smallest one, which is known to infect human. And the third point is this virus is called defective virus or a satellite virus because it requires hepatitis V virus to complete its life cycle in human. Uh, and this virus actually has been found to be more related to plant virus. It's a satellite virus, like I said before. It's a defective virus. Why it's a defective virus? Because it requires hepatitis B virus to complete its life cycle in human. So, so how it infects the human? So if this hepatitis D virus infects together with hepatitis B virus, that is simultaneous transmission of the two viruses, that is called co-infection. So what is co-infection? So simultaneous transmission of hepatitis D and hepatitis V virus is called co-infection. However, if this virus infects the person who has already been infected with hepatitis V virus, that is called superinfection. So what is superinfection? So if hepatitis D virus infects the person who is already infected with hep hepatitis B virus, that is called superinfection. So in the world, an estimated 15 to 20 million of the people, they have been found to be infected with hepatitis D virus. So this is the epidemiology. And this virus was first discovered by Mario Rizzetto and colleagues in, in the year 1977. Okay, so the synopsis of this slide is that hepatitis B virus is a spher spherical negative sense RNA virus which requires hepatitis B virus for its life cycle in humans. So what is the structure of this hepatitis B virus? Like shown here in the picture, the structure of hepatitis B virus is circular, which is about 36 nanometer in diameter. So the distance between these, these is uh, 36 nanometer in diameter. It's a small and spherical viral particle. So hepatitis D virus, as you can see in the picture, contains three SBB proteins. So hepatitis B surface antigens, so large hepatitis B surface antigens, medium hepatitis B surface antigens, and small hepatitis B surface antigens. So basically, this hepatitis D virus contain three proteins from hepatitis B virus. They are called surface antigens, so large hepatitis B surface antigen, medium hepatitis B surface antigen, and small hepatitis B surface antigen. Okay, so this one is large, this is medium, and this is small. So, Another point is that the genome, the genome of the hepatitis D virus RNA is about 1700 nucleotides. So this the genome of hepatitis D virus RNA is about 1700 nucleotides. So this is actually this genome is 1700 nucleotides, and the almost actually 200 molecules of hepatitis D antigens are present per genome. So this you can see this is the RNA here. This is RNA genome and surrounded by hepatitis. D antigens. These hepatitis D antigens are two type, I mean two isoforms, not types, small hepatitis D antigens and large hepatitis D antigens. So these small and large hepatitis D antigens in one viral particle, they are about 200 molecules and this RNA genome of hepatitis D virus is about 1700 nucleotides. So even though it's a single standard virus, because of the high GC content, guanine and cytosine, co cytosine content, the circular genome can fold into unbranched rod like structure. Okay, the circular genome is actually becomes rod like structure uh, because of this high GC content. Okay, so now another important point about hepatitis D virus is that hepatitis D virus does not encode its own replicates or RNA dependent RNA polymerases, therefore, it utilizes hosts. Hosts are in a polymerases. Okay, so hepatitis D virus also has a self cleavage activity. How? Because it encodes ribozyme domain, which is about 100 to uh, 80 to 100 nucleotides long. So by encoding ribozyme domain about 100 to 80 to 100 nucleotide long, it has this self uh, cleavage activity. So the last point, as I said before, SDV hepatitis D virus encodes only one 
hepatitis D antigen, only one protein, and this protein has two isoforms, okay, large hepatitis D antigen and small hepatitis D antigen. And this virus actually makes use of cellular machinery to complete its essential processes for its life cycle in human. So now let's talk about hepatitis D antigen. So hepatitis D virus, SDD genome, it contains several open, open reading frames. Several, there are several open reading frames because the, the, the overall length of the RNA genome is about 1700 nucleotides, but only one, only one open reading frame is actually appears to be actively transcribed and it, co it encodes an antigen with two forms, like I said before, small hepatitis D antigen, 24 kilodalton, 195 amino acids, and large hepatitis D antigen, 27 kilodalton, 214 amino acids. So, again, this picture here, large hepatitis D antigen and small hepatitis D antigen, these are the two isoforms of one protein, hepatitis D antigen, and that are encoded by, that are transcribed by, you know, only one open reading frame, okay? So now, so we have this open reading frame. So ORF, in this ORF, host RNA polymerase second, it acts and it transcribes ORF to uh, small hepatitis D antigen. And in the small hepatitis D antigen, there is uh, one enzyme called ADAR1, adenosine deaminase R1. This enzyme acts. What this enzyme does is that it replaces stop codon UAZ at position 196 on the mRNA by a tryptophan codon UZG, okay? So basically this AD, ADAR1 enzyme replaces the stop codon UAZ at position 196 on the mRNA by a tryptophan codon, so resulting in the transcription of large hepatitis D antigen. So how? Because reading frame, it gets extended by 19 amino acids, okay? So this is how the la both small hepatitis D antigen and large hepatitis D antigen are formed. Okay, so we have ORF and host RNA polymer second acts and it results in small hepatitis D antigen and with the help of ADAR on enzyme, the stop codon from 196 position on the mRNA is replaced by the tryptophan codon, thereby extending the reading frame by 19 amino acids, resulting in the uh, formation of large hepatitis D antigen. Okay, so what is the function of this uh, small hepatitis D antigen? It actually is involved in the initiation of viral genome replication, whereas this large hepatitis D antigen is actually inhibitor of replication and is essential for the assembly of new viral particles. So viral heterogeneity, this hepatitis D virus, it has eight different genotypes and STD RNA genome is actually highly variable up to 16% within the same genotype. So eight genotypes and 16% variation divergence within the same genotype compared with 20 to 40% between different genotypes. Okay, between genotype one and two, there will be 20 to 40% divergence, but within let's say genotype one, there will be 60% divergence. So this picture here shows uh, the dif distribution of different genotypes throughout the world. You, as you can see here, genotype one is is more here in this part of the world, like a genotype 1 and 3 in this part of the world, and genotype 5 to 8 in this part of the world. So, and genotype 1 in uh, in South Asia here, India and Nepal, this part of the world. So, basically, this picture here shows that the different genotypes are actually prevalent in different parts of the world. Okay? So, and this hepatitis D virus is, is very, very Heterogeneous viral genome is very, very heterogeneous. We have eight, different, eight genotypes, and so this is a very important point that you should remember. So now, why this is such a big divergence? And, and scientists believe that this divergence is partly due to the scarcity of proofreading ability of RNA polymerases, okay? So because there is, a, uh, there is no proofreading activity by RNA polymerases, uh, that's why there is this divergence in the uh, heterogeneity in the viral genome. So now let's talk about virus life cycle. So how this virus enters the human hepatocytes and how the processes goes on within the uh, human. So the first point is that this virion particle, as you can see here, this is a hepatitis D virion particle. What it does is that it attaches to the uncharacterized hepatocyte membrane receptor. The way it does 
we, is found to be similar with the hepatitis B virus because the outer part of hepatitis D virus is in here is similar to that of identical to that of actually hepatitis V virus. So what happens? The virion attaches to the hepatitis, hepatocyte via an interaction between large, large hepatitis B surface antigen and an uncharacterized hepatitis receptor. Okay, so there is an interaction between these. Also, these uh, these other uh, small uh, medium and small hepatitis B surface, surface antigens, they also play their role in this attachment. So, uncharacterized hepatocyte membrane receptor. So, hepatitis virion particle attach, attaches with the help of large, medium, and small hepat, hep, um, hepatitis B surface antigen with the hepatocyte uncharacterized hepatocyte receptors. So, this is the point number one. And point number two is then the virion enters the cell. Okay, so it, it enters, attaches, and then it enters the cell. And after entering the cell, actually, it is uncoated, okay? So now we only have the ribonuclear protein. These are hepatitis D, large and small antigens, and the RNA genome. So basically, this is the ribonucleo protein, okay? So it's after uncoating. And because these ribonucleo, in this ribonucleo protein, we have hepatitis D antigens, and they, they carry nuclear localization signal. Therefore, this ribonucleo protein is then targeted to the nucleus of the hepatocyte okay so it is targeted to the nucleus of the hepatocyte and for this what is what helps this uh, rnp is targeted to the nucleus and this is actually helped by the nuclear localization signal present in small and large hepatitis d in surface antigens okay so now it's inside the nucleus this ribonucleic protein is inside the nucleus and so the genomic RNA is transcribed in the nucleus. We have this genomic RNA and this is transcribed in the nucleus. One is actually from antigenomic, anti antigenomic RNA. We have one antigenomic RNA. Another one is messenger RNA. Okay, so we, another one is messenger RNA, which contains the open reading frame. This messenger RNA contains the open reading frame and this antigenomic RNA, this contains uh, which is the template for replication of new transcript. So this is the template for the replication of new transcript. This has um, uh, this has open reading frame and another also circular uh, RNA. Okay, circular complementary RNA. So basically, three different types of um, RNA have actually formed um, by utilizing the host machinery. Because this by utilizing the host machinery, three different types of this um, RNAs are formed from the genomic RNA. Okay, so. So for out of these messenger RNA, it has open reading frame, where, which forms a template for replication of new transcripts. Whereas this antigenomic RNA actually, antigenomic RNA, what is the role of it is that this antigenomic RNA, you know, which forms the templates for new transcript and messenger RNA, it has open reading frame, open reading frame, okay? This messenger RNA has open reading frame, okay? This is the transcript, this is the template for the um, transcript of the circular genome, okay? Replication, for the replication, this one, so basically this one for the replication, just remember this. So then once the, this messenger RNA and this messenger RNA will be exported out of the out of the cell and now it enters the cytoplasm. Okay, so it's exported out to the cytoplasm where it is translated at the endoplasmic reticulum. We have here endoplasmic reticulum. It is translated at the endoplasmic reticulum to form new molecules of hepatitis D antigen. Okay, so this messenger RNA is exported out of the cell and at the endoplasmic reticulum, new molecules of new molecules of hepatitis D antigens are formed, both small and large, both isoforms. Okay, these are formed in the cytoplasm at the endoplasmic reticulum. And then these new antigen molecules, these new antigen molecules, both they actually return to the nucleus where small, uh, small they return to the nucleus. Okay, from here they return to the nucleus where small SDG isoform supports further genome replication. Small SDG, uh, small SDG hepatitis D antigen it supports further genome replications, where both forms of hepatitis antigen associate with new transcript of genomic RNA to form new uh, new RNP. So we already we have here genomic RNA, and these. Both forms of small and large, small and large um, hepatitis D antigens, they actually uh, associate with this new trans, new 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 transcript, new transcript of the genomic RNA, and they they form this ribonucleo protein, so new RNP. And then now this new RNP is actually we have this new RNP, and this new RNP is now exported uh, to the cytoplasm, where large um, hepatitis C antigen facilitate the association with SBV envelope proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum form to form new virus particles. So we have here 
this is what this is a ribonucleic protein so what it has it has rna uh, rna plus the hepatitis d antigen so now it goes out of it comes out of the cell and in the cytoplasm it associates with these 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 proteins what are these these are this these are the proteins of sbb hepatitis b envelope okay they associate with these and they form a new virus particle okay so this one new virus particle so but these virus particles first they burst through and burst through an inter intermediate compartment okay which is a golgi complex and they are then exported from the hepatocyte via trans golgi network to reinfect further cells so then once this is formed it will be exported out to reinfect new cells so simple so we have hepatitis d a virion it enters the cell interacting with hepatocyte membrane receptor in the cell on coating occurs and we have ribonucleoprotein only the hepatitis d antigens and the rna genome and these they have uh, they have what they have they actually have this uh, uh, nuclear localization signals therefore it goes to the nucleus in the nucleus this genomic rna is transcribed into messenger rna and antigenomic rna and then this messenger rna is exported out because it has open reading frame and it forms what it forms it forms this small and large isoforms of uh, in in the endoplasmic reticulum small and large isoforms of what hepatitis d antigens and these are then um, transported back to the nucleus in the nucleus they associate with the newly formed transcript of um, newly formed transcript okay and and they make uh, this rnp ribonucleoprotein and this ribonucleoprotein is then again exported out from the cell and 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 in the in the endoplasmic reticulum where the, what they do is that they associate with hepatitis B surface antigens, okay, both large, small, and medium, and they form this uh, complete virus particle. But this, they has to go through an intermediate compartment, and when this complete, of course, uh, virus particle is formed through Golgi, a trans-Golgi network, uh, network, it is transported out, and then it can reinfect the cells again, okay? So, I talked about the life cycle. Now, here I'm going to talk about how this virus uh, gets transmitted so like hepatitis b virus sdb actually gets transmitted via the parenteral route through infected blood or or, or body fluids uh, and actually the tests in chimpanzees have sh have shown that only a very small inoculum of this virus is sufficient to infect uh, uh, sufficient to transmit the infection okay very small inoculum and this is this virus infection rate is very very higher in the intravenous drug users and like i said before it actually transmits via sexual reproduction so I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for your kind attention.